Hi, I'm Katie Cook, and welcome to ConStars. What's going on, fellow Con Cruisers? This is a <laughs> Con Cruisers. Yes, I am the Concert Cruiser, but I'm here in Orlando MegaCon, the San Diego Comic Con of the state. I'm here with another MLP uh, comic uh, comic artist, Katie Cook. Katie, it's great to meet you. Nice to meet you. I am a big fan of the comic book series. It's great to finally get a chance to meet you. Uh, when I met Andy Price last year, I told him that you guys were the inspiration for a panel of mine called the Fenny Equestria Girls, and now I actually get to ask a writer yes. all these questions. So now, aside from being a writer, you actually have done artwork for the comics as well. Do you actually have a preference between the two? Um, you know, I've always been an artist first. I came into writing uh, comics and kids books after, you know, everything. You know, I have a BFA in illustration, um, so the art is always going to be my favorite part. So. Mm. Uh, now, aside from IDW, yeah. you've also done work with uh, DC and Marvel. How did you get involved with all those different uh, comic book uh, companies? Well, it's, you know, DC, I did a, an anthology for Gotham Academy, and I guess they just really liked my writing and my artwork, and they asked me to work on it. Uh, same thing with Marvel. They've asked me to do, uh, like, the Spider-Verse, and I Am an Avenger, and I've gotten to do a lot of cover art for, um, I did the animal variants. I got to do some cute Star Wars covers, and uh, I've also illustrated a bunch of Star Wars kids books for uh, Disney Lucasfilm Press. Oh, um, I, uh, I've done ABC 3PO and OB123, so I've gotten to do a lot of artwork for Star Wars uh, basically over the last 10 years. Oh my god, that is incredible. Now, uh, from, according to Jason Teeson, the comics for MLP are technically not canon. So with that being said, does the uh, comic writing staff actually keep up with the show to see uh, what they could possibly use as a reference or what possible characters uh, they could use, uh, you could possibly put in your issues? Uh, you would be doing yourself a disservice if you ignored the show while writing the licensed book. Um, so yeah, if, if anybody is uh, worth their salt, they're paying attention to the show. Are you actually kind of hoping the show will put a comic book exclusive character in the show itself? They have. They put Andy and I in the background. Really? What episode can we find you guys in? Uh, in Princess Spike, we're in the background. There's another one where I'm wandering around the background in Manhattan, and then in the new season opener, you can see us in the background. Andy's talking to Mare Mare, and I'm just hanging out. Um, and then uh, Oubliettes and Ogre is, is from the comics, from one of the ones I wrote. Okay, we're going to have to really look into that one. <laughs> so it's the background Around, um, the, the backup gag in the Shining Armor Cadence story. Um, he and uh, his crew are playing Oubliettes and Ogres um, after the thing, and I got to make, I made up that game, so, and they made up all the rules and everything, so. Have you actually got a chance to play the uh, uh, MLP official RPG book that came out? No. <laughs> well, I actually just got, I can't wait to actually kind of skim it over, but I got tons of issues I'm backed up on that I need to read. Now, you actually told me a few days ago that uh, you get a certain email from a fan every time you release an issue. I wouldn't call him a fan. <laughs> okay, a <laughs> critique, a critic, we will call him. <laughs> uh, who basically likes to criticize your work every time you release an issue. But however, what I think is funny is the fact that you turn this into a comedy reading with your husband. I do. <laughs> I know. I'm terrible. But there's there was a guy that after every issue I wrote, he would send me this really long, long, long email about everything he hated about it. Like, he would just dissect it. Like, even the thing where I was like, well, nobody can hate that joke. That's kind of funny. And he was like, nope, he hated it. Um, but I think he also just hated me in general. <laughs> There's something about me that he didn't like. How could anybody hate you? I don't know. People that don't like flannel. Um, <laughs> but, you know, uh, it was just so I, I would be like, all right, Ryan. <laughs> I got another one, and it would turn into a little bit of a dramatic reading. <laughs> you ought to turn that into a web series. That would actually be hysterical. Oh, I don't want to put it. I'm not going to be that mean. But You don't have to say the guy's name. You just got to say, like, oh, look what this butthole is saying. But, man, it's like it got a little personal, and um, I don't I don't miss that because I haven't written anything since Deviations because I've been busy with Disney stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but so, I don't miss his emails. <laughs> Now, what can you tell us about the uh, prequel comic to the movie that we all have been hearing about? Uh, it's probably got some ponies in it. Um, <laughs> they're probably pastel colored. Uh, I believe there are 
are cutie marks and uh, there will be backgrounds and line art and dialogue and printed pages and that's about all I got. Okay, well, let me ask you this. Uh, the prequel comic, that actually is, in fact, canon with the movie, though. Oh, I didn't write it. <laughs> <I'm not involved. laughs> I, got, I got nothing. Okay, well, well, one last quick one here. Uh, I know, as you, as you said, you've been doing a lot of stuff with Star Wars here, and you also just got back from the Star Wars celebration yes. as well. Uh, but what was that like for you? Because there were so many people who said it was like a madhouse, but for others, they said it was worth it. Where do you stand on that line? It's Star Wars is one of my... my my nerd loves. So for me, it's you know I've been doing stuff with Lucasfilm for like I said 10 years, and I've been involved in celebration back during like the dark ages of Star Wars when all we had that was new was the prequels. So, um, for me, it's the fact that Star Wars is as popular and as massive as it is now. Again, um, that that makes my heart all a twitter. Um, we get new Star Wars, and it's good Star Wars. We have Rebels, we have Force Awakens, we have Rogue One, we have all of this new content, and it's gonna we're gonna start getting bombarded with it and the Star Wars lands at the parks mm. so this is like I'm in my element when we've got Star Wars so well I hope you definitely enjoy your time here in Florida and be sure to actually still say hello to Spencer Wilding over there Rogue One's Darth Vader <laughs> all right thank you so much for joining us this has been Cruiser and I'll see you next time at the con